morning, everybody. It's Monday. We made it through another weekend. Woohoo! I've started this video twice now, and Astra went to the hallway and started howling like somebody's ripping off her leg. So <laughs> I'm hoping that we get a go around now. So uh, we aren't going to do the cards today because um, yesterday and today, well, Saturday and Sunday and today, um, there were some things that kind of bubbled up. And I wanted to make sure that I took a minute this morning to help you reframe because this is something I've had to work on a lot. So I grew up with somebody who's basically a sociopath, a narcissist. Um, I don't know what that person's clinical diagnosis is, but um, very, very toxic, right? years and years of therapy and honestly until about 10 15 years ago now i think about maybe a little bit less i didn't know the term narcissist i had not heard that term um but as somebody who is psychic and works with people all the time one of the things that i did know is i knew that there were people who were damaged People who had gifts, the gift of empathy normally, nine times out of 10, that's what it is. And they're, they're damaged in some way. And that empathy turns into a weapon, basically. And that weapon protects them. But that protection also is a form of damage. It's a form of trauma. And they become very selfish, very... They're self-aware in the sense that they know that it's about protecting themselves. They may not realize they're narcissists, so to speak, but they know that what they do protects them and takes care of them. And you can help, let me rephrase that. Only a narcissist can help themselves. A narcissist has to come to a place of self-awareness enough to work on those behaviors and those feelings and that trauma. Now, what happens, unfortunately, is that if you have a narcissist who is around somebody who's very empathetic, somebody who is very emotional, very caring, very, um, who can pick up that Underneath all that horrible behavior is a good person. <clears throat> and yes, I'm talking about myself. I've totally been trapped here before where I know it's a good person. I know underneath all of that behavior and all of those toxic traits is a good soul. They take advantage of that. So toxic people, narcissists, and you can be toxic and not narcissist but narcissists are their own thing. Um, and there is actually a narcissist uh, psychiatric disorder. And that, that's all from an energetic perspective, I will tell you people who have that narcissistic personality disorder, like that actual D DVM diagnosis, everyone I've met that has that truly is someone who is a broken empath, somebody who has gifts that are very sensitive on the empathy side, but they've turned that, it's been warped, it's been damaged, and that's a whole nother thing. Um, the thing about narcissists, okay, so I'm gonna back up. So empaths, who are broken empaths, who, be, who are narcissists. It's really hard for people around them that are really sensitive to realize that's what going on, what's going on because they see the soul underneath, right? Um, but those narcissists, they can't be helped in, except they have to help themselves. 
And the more caring and giving and the more kind and more empathetic you are, the more vulnerable you are to narcissists because they seek out individuals like that who have that part of themselves that makes, well, I think the biggest thing is that they take advantage of situations where you have somebody who's very sensitive and caring who doesn't have good boundaries. They take advantage of people who um, are easy to manipulate, especially emotionally manipulate because they're broken empaths. Like they can sense that there is somebody who is also empathetic, who is easy to manipulate. They also can sense when there's a chink, when somebody's not creating clear boundaries. Now you can have people who are not in broken empaths, who are not narcissistic, who are toxic. They're just toxic. <laughs> um, and they are really good at seeking out people they can take advantage of. They're also very good about manipulating situations, um, but their energy is also toxic. So they're a little bit, in my opinion, easier to kind of hone in on in a room because they don't feel good. They feel icky. <laughs> um, and that's layman's description of how to tell them apart. One, it's really hard to tell that they're a narcissist because they don't feel bad, but toxic, they feel icky. <laughs> I don't know really how to verbalize that any better, but the reason I wanted to kind of explain the difference a little bit is because, you know, as you shift, as you work on your spiritual self, as you connect to the seasons, as you do the, the things that bring you that place of peace, and I'll go over place of peace, I think, tomorrow, because I want to review that. Um, I was sitting this weekend and I was, oh, I love this place of peace in my center. I feel good. Oh, I got all this stuff done in like three hours. And I thought it was, I thought four hours had gone by. Kind of had that time flip thing. Um, as you're shifting, right, energetically, things, I wrote this down. So things that you used to tolerate now become intolerable where you once remained quiet, you now speak your truth, where you once battled and argued, you are now choosing to remain silent. You're beginning to understand the value of your voice. And there are some situations that no longer deserve your time, your energy, and your focus. That's why I brought up toxic and narcissistic people because we have all had them in our lives. And I still have a really hard time recognizing narcissists. It takes me probably 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour in their presence to kind of really suss that out now. Um, used to, it would take days, months, weeks to figure out, oh, well that, that person's narcissistic and they're using me and this feels horrible and I'm gonna stop. <laughs> now I'm a little bit better, I can, I can still, they're still really hard to sense because they don't feel icky, but toxic people, toxic people my whole life, I've known who they are. They feel gross. They're not dark entities, okay? Dark entities are a whole different thing, but people who have a wrongness about them because of their toxic energy, and it can be correlated to life themes unless that person's written into my blueprint and I'm supposed to learn from them, but that's a whole nother thing. Nine times out of 10, I can feel the distinct difference. And as you shift into that place of peace and you work on yourself and you work on your blueprint and you activate stuff in your life, I will tell you that seeing things the way they are and what's good for you and what's not for you becomes easier to create good boundaries. There's a really, there's, there's a lot of good information right now out there about creating good boundaries, but what's interesting is narcissistic people will tell you that they have healthy boundaries. 
but they make it that everything that you do is bad in the sense that if you don't give them what they want, then you're bad. And that's where boundary creation becomes a double-edged sword with a narcissist. Toxic people, well, they just don't stick around people with good boundaries anyway. They just don't. And good boundaries can be warped and manipulated by that narcissistic person. And it can be very much be manipulated by um, toxic behavior, right? Doesn't mean the person's bad, but their behavior is toxic. Um, which means it's a little harder to see that person. Um, family, friends, community, those are all things that are tricky to discern the toxicity sometimes in that. But a good boundary is, I'll, I'll give this as an example. So a good boundary is, hey, I need some quiet time today. Um, I know that we scheduled tea, but I'm going to I'm going to stay at home today cuz I need to I need to really do this for myself. You communicated that with say a friend or an acquaintance or even a sister or a brother or whatever. And that person turns around and says, "How could you do this to me? I made these plans several weeks ago. How can you abandon me? I have this other person that is going to meet us and I've been planning this for weeks." And you sit with it and you go, you know what? I, I'm really sorry I'm gonna have to do this. Um, this is not meant as a personal affront to you, but I do have to take care of myself. If that person still continues to attack you and it's all about you being selfish, that's not healthy. The difference in a good relationship and somebody who's not toxic and not narcissistic, that person will say, oh, I am, I'm really sad to hear that you can't come. Um, I'm very disappointed because I did make these plans a couple weeks ago, but I am going to give you that grace to take care of yourself. I had somebody that was gonna come. I'll just have tea with them and maybe we can reschedule the three of us together another time. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that feels so much better. Thank you so much. I had a really hard time calling you. I was feeling really bad about it, but I just wanna be honest. No, that's okay. You're being honest. Yes, I'm disappointed, but I also get that you have to take care of yourself. Do you hear the difference between the two conversations? <laughs> One is all about how could you do this? You're a horrible person. You never follow through, you know, like whatever the negativity is. The other is expressing your feelings that you're disappointed, but you're not attacking the other person. Somebody who is very manipulative will always attack, will always make the person that is trying to create the boundary feel bad because their feeling bad gives the person who makes them feel bad power and control. It's one thing to share your emotions and be disappointed and share how you feel about something and attacking someone and making it all their fault. And that's where when, as you shift, you will start to really hear the difference. When you find your place of peace every day, you will hear the difference. You will be very conscientious of that difference and be able to create better boundaries. One of the things that um, I had to learn to do is when people came at me, because as a catalyst, I often have people who get really mad at messages. They get mad at information. And I don't understand being mad at information. I'm just sharing information. But they get mad at me because I'm the messenger of the information. So that I do understand. And I... I've gotten to a place where I can sit with it and go, I understand that you're hurt or you're angry and you didn't want to hear it. Being mad at me isn't going to change those things. But I am going to tell you that I will let you express those emotions until it becomes abusive. And once it becomes abusive, I am I'm going to create that line because I'm not your punching bag, <laughs> not your emotional punching bag. And that's a hard place to be. And 
it's a hard place to listen to truth and you should be able to listen to truth from your friends and your family but that truth should not be abusive and it should not be harmful it doesn't mean it's not going to hurt I mean, I want people around me to be truthful. I want people to say, hey, Red, your hair's nasty and you should probably wash it. Oh, self-care. Oh my goodness, I may have missed self-care this week. They could say it nicely though. <laughs> but I also understand that sometimes harsh truths are all dependent on the delivery. You can deliver a harsh truth without being unkind, without being mean, without being toxic, without being narcissistic. I do what I do because I care about people. I truly want people to be able to grab hold of their lives and be activated members of their own life. Too many of us, and you know, myself included, I kind of wandered around for a while feeling like life was happening at me and I was really lucky that I had a beautiful guide that just kept worrying at it. <laughs> he was very insistent to make sure I got the message that activation is participation. So to be a participant in your life, you shift, you shift your realization of the world. You activate and make choices based on knowledge of what it is that you can and are able and are are potential to do in this life and there's a lot of variation in that and Astra has come to say hello right Astra what are you doing she is so funny so the last couple days that it's been really cool she has been all kinds of cuddly and energetic and running like crazy and back and forth. And the hotter it gets, the more lethargic she is, the more she just kind of like, don't touch me. I don't want to lay in your lap. I'm going to lay in the middle of the floor. Um, but the cooler it's been, the more she's been cuddly and affectionate. It's really funny. Okay. So that's today. That's some thoughts for today. Toxic versus narcissistic, creating good boundaries. That's a lot for today's daily devotion. Um, what am I doing today? Well, today, um, so yesterday I sat and made a list of all the things I have left to do before Great Western War. So I am going to sit with my list a little bit. I also have an appointment at 10 a.m., an online appointment. Um, I do need to get into my webpage and do a little bit of work on that. I need to get my printer working because I have like a whole bunch of things to print for Great Western or for the classes I'm teaching. Um, I'm hopefully not gonna do computer work past noon because I really need to get in the studio and get to the making part of things. Um, I have a couple things cut out. I have a couple things I'm like halfway in between in the middle of. Um, yeah, today's going to be really busy. I'm really hoping that the web page gets a little bit of traction and people start booking for the spaces that I have and paying online. I'm trying to make that as the clients have a little bit more control of that. Um, I do only have two days open on my schedule. So if just spread the news, if there's any other day that works better for you, I can look at my schedule and see what I can squeeze in. But I didn't want to put online bookings just schedule whatever because I do have other stuff that I need to do and um, I also really like to plan ahead so I don't really want to do bookings where they can book an hour before we have a session and then I'm not prepared or I ended up going into town or whatever so anyway you all have a blessed day and I will see you tomorrow in daily devotion and Blessed be.